Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and I know that flourishing can be really, really overwhelming as a beginner. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my step-by-step -step process and some warm-ups you can do to get comfortable with flourishing and then how to add them to your letters. Let's jump right in. All right, so first things first, as always, the first thing to talk about is tools. So in this video, I'm gonna be using marker paper. This is Canson marker paper, but any marker paper, any tracing paper will do for the purposes of what we're gonna do here. Then I have Rhodia paper. This is the grid pad, and so it's got guidelines on it. This is just a really good high quality paper. And then I have a Tombow dual brush. You can use any brush pen and any monoline pen. This one just happens to have both. So one end is not a brush pen and one end is a brush pen, but if you wanna use something else, you're totally welcome to do that as well. All the links to the supplies are in the video down below, as well as a link to my 50 page supplies guide that you can access anytime you want to. So the first thing I want you to do is go and download this free worksheet that I've made for you. So we're going to use this to learn how to do flourishing and it's totally free. So just go down in the description below. You can pause the video and go download that worksheet and then we're going to get started. So step one is to practice flourishing using a monoline pen, which means that it's not going to be adding or releasing pressure like a brush pen would. So this makes it a lot easier to just practice the shapes rather than having to concentrate on the shapes and the pressures at the same time. So to do that, you're gonna need this worksheet that you just downloaded, and then you're gonna put a piece of marker paper or tracing paper over top, and you're gonna take your monoline pen, so for me, I'm using the felt tip end of a Tombow dual brush, and you're just gonna go over these shapes. Now, what you wanna think about as you're doing this is that you don't want to plant your hand and only use finger movements. When you're flourishing, you really wanna think about moving your whole arm and your wrist and not planting your hand and just doing this motion. So you can only go so far with your fingers before you get shaky and you also won't be able to do any big, nice swooping flourishes if you're just using your fingers. So go over these shapes and think about using your wrist and your arm and letting your hand move freely on the page. At this point, you also don't need to worry about where you're starting and stopping, like if you're starting at this end versus starting at this end. At this point, it's just up to you. All you're doing is practicing the shapes and sort of getting warmed up and understanding what flourishes look like. And then when you get more comfortable with it, you can try doing it from different directions and you can play with the different shapes of them and just get used to it. So at this point, you're just kind of tracing and using your whole arm getting used to the motions. Then once you've done all of this in your monoline pen and you've gotten used to the sort of shapes, you're gonna move your tracing paper off and you're gonna grab another piece and you're gonna do the exact same thing, except this time you're gonna use the pressures that you've learned for your brush pens. Now, if you've never used brush pens before, you should not be doing any flourishing yet. You should be going back to more basic videos. So just click up here and move on to some of those more basic videos. But when you have learned how to use a brush pen and you're ready to give all of this a try with pressures, what you need to keep in mind is that you don't wanna cross two thick lines. So let's say I was gonna go and do this flourish, okay? So here I'm moving in an upwards direction so it's thin. Here I'm moving down so it's thick, up, thin, down, thick, and then back up. But you don't wanna cross two thick lines like I just did here. So what you actually wanna do in this instance is fudge it a little bit. So you would go down thick here, and then as you come back down, you actually are just gonna keep it thin so that you don't end up with those thick lines crossing. That makes your flourishes look a lot more pleasant. So again, you're just gonna go through this whole page doing the pressures this time, except you're gonna think about not crossing two thick downstrokes. Hey. 
Okay, so once you've completed that, you've got a feel for what flourishing feels like. And of course you can do this with any pen you want. So sometimes it might feel a little bit awkward with a large tip brush pen like a Tombow. You could definitely use a smaller tip brush pen and get the hang of it that way too. And so once you've finished that, now we're gonna move on to doing these on actual letters. So one letter that's really easy to flourish right off the bat when you're just getting started with it is the letter T. So I've now switched to Rhodia paper just so that I have some grid lines to help me stay on track a little bit. And I'm still using my Tombow dual tip pen and I've drawn out just the stem of some T's all in here. They're all the same size. I've just spread them out across the page so that I have room to play with. And now I'm just going to start experimenting with different flourishes. So you can take that page you had earlier with your inspiration on it or you can just work out of your brain and start doing some fun flourishes on here. So right off the bat, let's say to keep it simple for the first one, I'll just do a really simple flourish in here. So you're just extending it, making it bigger and a little bit more of a swoosh. Now I wanna try and do one a little bit more complicated. And one rule that I want you to start to keep in mind at this point, we talked about not crossing thick flourishes, but now I wanna talk about not making your flourish quite as heavy as your actual letter. So if this is the thickness of my downstroke on my stem, I don't want that thickness to ever be as heavy in the flourish or it's gonna overpower your letter. So let's say I wanted to do one a little bit more complicated over here. This part's gonna be a downstroke, but it's not quite as thick as my letter. So if that was really thick, it would overpower this letter and you wouldn't really be able to tell that it's a T. So I'm just gonna keep going and add some fun flourishes to these letters too. So essentially I just want you to fill up a page Keep adding T stems all over the place and keep just adding different flourishes and play with them. Another letter that's really easy to flourish and great to practice with is the letter Y. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and add just the underturn as the start of my letter Y in a couple different spots on this page. Don't worry about them being like perfectly spread out or anything at this point. You're just trying to give yourself some different spots to practice. So you're gonna spread them out and then you're just gonna try doing some flourishes on the Y. So again, you can start with a really simple one, just a bigger swoosh, and then you can start to get a little bit more fancy. So same thing with this Y, just keep adding more of those underturns on your page and fill it up with more examples. So the next step is to start flourishing words. So the easiest way to do this and the example I'm gonna use is gonna practice those two letters that we just learned, the T and the Y. So let's say I wanted to write the word toy. And all you're gonna do first is write out the word as you normal, normally would in your calligraphy. But you're gonna leave out the ascenders and the descenders. So this is what toy would look like without the bottom of the Y or the top of the T. And now you're gonna just add in your flourishes. So the one rule I want you to think about when you start to add flourishes to words is that you wanna think about it being balanced. So let's say I added a big flourish on this side of the T. And so now when I do my Y, I wanna make sure that I'm balanced on the bottom part and also on the opposite side of it. So let's add a flourish on the Y that looks something like this. And now you can see that it feels nice and balanced on either side and there's still nice and big flourishes on either one. So that would be a really simple example, but just like you did with the single T and the single Y, I want you to just write out that basic part of your word and then play with different ways of flourishing it. Now the last thing I wanna go over is flourishing words that don't necessarily have easy letters to flourish. So usually the ascenders and the descenders are the easiest places to add your flourishes. So like we did on the T and the Y, but let's say we wrote a word like animal. And so you might notice right off the bat that there aren't that many opportunities to flourish other than your L. You could easily add a flourish on the end of this L, but it's hard to flourish some letters that are always sitting on the X height. So I'm gonna take a different color of marker just to demonstrate. And basically what you're gonna do with these ones is you're gonna change the way that they're connected so that you can flourish the bottom or the top of them. So let's say I wanted to flourish 
the end of my L over here and I added a flourish, something like this for my L. But I know that now this is gonna look really unbalanced because there's nothing over here. And we talked about balance previously, so you know that you want it to be balanced on either side. Well, let's say maybe I'm gonna decide to flourish this N. So now I'm gonna take this regular part of my N and just extend it down and add a flourish down here. So now I'm just gonna get rid of this connection here and keep the spacing the same, but turn that letter into a flourished letter. So if I were to now rewrite that word, as I get to my end here, I know that I'm gonna flourish it. And then I'm gonna keep writing the rest of my letter or the rest of my word as normal. And now I'm gonna do the flourish for this L. And that's how you would flourish a word that doesn't necessarily have lots of ascenders and descenders. So flourishing really comes down to practice and understanding which letters are easiest and hardest to flourish and how to balance things and when to make things look more flourished or less flourished. So once you've tried all of those things in this video, flourishing on its own, flourishing monoline, adding the crosses on T's, adding the descenders on Y's, and adding the flourishes to your letters, you might be feeling like you're ready to do some other letters or get extra inspiration on your flourishing. And I have a full flourishing workbook that I've linked down below and it walks through all the different rules for flourishing. And then we go over flourishing every single letter in the alphabet. So I've got uppercase letters and then every lowercase letter has its own way to be flourished and I go over all of these in the workbook. So if you're feeling ready for this, you can find the link to it down below. And other than that, just keep practicing and flourishing will come over time. So hopefully that gets you a little more comfortable with flourishing. It definitely takes a lot of practice. And so if you're ready to get a little more serious about flourishing, make sure you go down in the description below where I have a free worksheet you can download right away. And I also have a full workbook that goes over the ins and outs of flourishing and we go through every letter of the alphabet. So I hope you find those helpful and I'll see you next time.